Sit. Sit. Girl. Ah, sit. Boys. So if you're wondering why we had to break out the kennel again for Bella, she's actually in heat. Um, this is her second heat cycle. And so the next question from you, if you didn't watch the video on her last heat cycle, which there's a good chance you didn't, it's best for dogs to go through a couple of heat cycles, basically to grow up fully and larger dogs take longer than smaller dogs, I guess. Um, but until they're fully done growing, their joints aren't fully formed. This is all from the breeder, I don't know this. And so that's why some dogs have joint issues, uh, especially larger dogs like Bella, giant dogs, they tend to have more hip issues um, than other dogs. And so you just wanna make sure that you can, if possible, let them grow up completely. So after two cycles, she's there. And so now we can get her spayed after this is over. Take a look at what I've been up to. Last time I showed you this wall, it went to about right there. Now it's all the way over. So I've got it about to the point, maybe just a couple more feet where it's actually at the ground level. You know, this whole part here is gonna have to be taken down. And so this will now run into where the ground is level. Now there's still about 12 to 15 more feet of, of at least garden left. So what I'll probably do is just bury one course of stone with the capstones on top just to finish out the line. But before I do that, I have to make sure I have enough brick. Um, and there's a couple places I have to use it still. Number one would be here by the house. I need to bring this wall further down by about eight feet. And then down here at the bottom of the stairs, I need a wall to match this one. So one more on this side. So those are the next two priorities with the wall. And then if I have some left, I'll continue that one row across. You guys notice how nice and overcast it is? I think got a couple more hours before it burns off, but uh, today is actually garden cleanout day, vegetable garden cleanout day. There's just, I mean, it still looks good from far away, but when you get in, you know, this basil here, unfortunately it's cool today, so there's not as many bees on it, but I'm gonna have to cut it way back. Habanada peppers, need to harvest the rest of those. Got to cut the corn down. I got to figure out something to do with the million eggplants that I have. This is weird. This one okra here lost all of its leaves. The rest are fine. Just this one. So I'm anxious to pull it up and see if I've got the root knot nematodes on this. Let's just do it right now. Most of the roots stayed in there, but I don't know. The ones that I pulled up didn't have a lot of space to look, but they look kind of... Nobbly. Where is Where's the roots? Are they all underneath the gopher wire? I'll try pulling up another one. These look fine, but this wasn't the one that was losing its leaves. Now, okra leaves don't usually make me itchy, but these are. I'm going to go in and wash up and change change shirts and then I'll rinse off those first roots and see if I can see anything. And then we'll get to the actual subject of today's video. Well, I realized all my long sleeve shirts are still put away <laughs> for the summer, so I put an even shorter sleeve on. Anyway, I'm not going to touch the uh, okra anymore right now. I will rinse them off and check the roots and compare the two. Okay, so you can see on this one here, the roots are totally smooth. And what's left of this root system, you can see has little knobs all over it. Now I'm gonna have to go back and watch that old video because I know in one of these beds, I took out the zucchini, I think, and it had the root knot nematode look on the roots. I'm not sure if it was this bed or not. So I'm actually glad that I'm deciding to tear out the summer garden because it's about time that I need to get on this. I have not seen a plant defoliate like that 
in my garden with root knot nematodes. When I had it on the tomatoes last year, they did not defoliate. They didn't look super healthy. Um, and then on the, the zucchini that I pulled out, they didn't look unhealthy at all, actually. I was surprised to see that. So, whoa, look at this. This oak where there's a big praying mantis. Companion planting works. Get my book. Okay, so now to the uh, subject of today's video, <laughs> which is all connected, but um, this time of year is the time of year where you really need to do something that is going to help you next year. In fact, if you don't do it, it's going to hurt you. It's going to hurt the garden. You're not going to grow as a gardener and your garden's not going to do as well. This is the time of year when you take stock and take notes. I hope this isn't too late for some of you. If it is, you'll just have to have a little bit better memory than I do, uh, because I will guarantee you, you know in your mind what worked this year in the garden and what did not. You know what you want to grow more of, you know what you want to grow less of. You know what you want to do and don't do compared to this year. So this is the time of year I do this video every year. Usually I do it on the gardening channel. I thought I'd switch it up a little bit. Um, and by taking notes, if you're a person who likes to write notes down or journal, that's great. Do it that way. For me, obviously, I'm more into video. So these videos serve as my journal that I go back to in like January when I'm getting ready to order seeds or plan the garden out. And I just look at these videos and then I know what I need to do that year. I'm telling you, it's a game changer. It seems so simple, but it works. And I've heard from lots of you each year I do this video that it was helpful to know that because you just never thought of it. But I also hear from some people who do it and say that's the only way they can garden successfully. So I'm going to go through the garden with you and tell you what I'm going to do different next year, what I liked about this year. So let's do it. So the sweet potatoes, there's nothing to change about them. Every year they do well. They're doing well this year. In fact, uh, I'm thinking we're going to be doing the harvest video in a couple of weeks. I did see a, a bloom over here. It's closed up, but it's a bloom. So when they start to bloom or when they start to uh, get yucky looking, that's when you harvest them. Now let's talk about this, the upside down tomato plant. A couple things wrong with this. First of all, I used a tomato that wasn't, it had been neglected. Um, when we were gone on vacation, it got dry a few times. And when I got back, it was kind of, it had died except the tip uh, was putting out new growth. So I went ahead and used it anyway, but it never really recovered. It didn't help that I've told you before, if things are not on drip irrigation here, they just don't get watered. This got watered a few times. Now I will tell you that, uh, and I'll put a link to this video in the, um, in the description, but I changed the design that I saw on the internet um, and I made my own design. I put a piece of pipe in the bottom to have a, a small reservoir of water at the bottom of that bucket because we have a very dry climate here and it would probably dry out daily. That worked. This basil, before I stopped watering it, it actually was doing better. That was, a, that was an afterthought too. I actually used this plant uh, as a demonstration in the School of Traditional Skills video. So I just brought it over here and plunked it in and it was already at that point looking like an old plant. It had bloomed and it had been cut back. However, it until I stopped watering it, it looked like the healthiest basil plant. It was compact, bushy, green. It was super healthy. So that trick, keeping that water in the bottom, that helped. I will definitely do that again next year. I'm definitely going to do this again next year. I'll start it earlier. Um, this wasn't started till the end of July. As far as, and yes, I still haven't picked up the geraniums that I cut. I'm only one person. But my tomatoes, the shade cloth worked on the newer tomatoes. And even on the older ones, they started doing better once the shade cloth was up. This is also the second year I've been trialing something that I will probably show you in the spring. Um, both years now, it has produced plants that were more vigorous and uh, had more blooms on them and more fruit. So you can see this plant here, and these are the same variety. It's, it's fine. It's doing fine. Um, but this, the main stem isn't very thick. This one next to it... It is much more robust. I've already had to lower it twice, where this one I haven't had to lower at all. Uh, so it's grown taller. It's a much thicker stem. 
and each one that I did that way is better than its neighbor that wasn't done that way. So what I used is kind of expensive. And so what I'm doing this winter is sourcing a few that hopefully I can do what I did with the tomato hooks and find the best quality and buy in bulk and then release them to you guys that way. Uh, if I can't, then in the spring, I'll just tell you what it is and put a, an Amazon link. And those of you who want to and can afford it can do it. Um, and then let me know what you think. So the thing with the tomatoes and with the peppers, both this year needed shade cloth. There was no way around it. The whole first flush of peppers, they got sun scald unless they were buried under the basil. And then we already talked about the tomatoes. So what I'm going to do over the winter is I'm going to make a shade structure that goes over this top terrace here and the second terrace here. And then all of them, anything that needs shade, so the peppers, tomatoes, uh, those are going to go on the top two sections and then the rest of the sun lovers will go down below. And I had a lot of you tell me that uh, Millennial Gardener and uh, Maya at Roots and Refuge had done them. I had seen Maya's. Um, I'm not going to make it retractable, I don't think. Um, I think I'll just make it easy to clip up. We don't get like super strong winds and that here. So I think that'll be okay. We'll see. I just gave the basil a little haircut because it was getting ready to bloom. These are my black eyed peas. This was a trap crop for aphids and it totally worked. Um, I'm going to go ahead and save the seeds off of this. That's why I haven't harvested any. I mean, black eyed peas, you harvest dry anyway. So, But I'll save these for next year. But there's a lot on here, so some of them will be our lucky black eyed peas for New Year's Day. If you guys are Southern, you probably know all about what I'm talking about. Zucchini, um, I had too much green. I, I always do. I said it in the last year's video, but, but you, you know, you grow them from seed. They look so healthy. You just want to keep them all. Basil, I am not going to plant this much basil. <laughs> this is Thai basil. And it has taken over uh, more than half of this eight foot bed and half of each of the paths on the sides. So I love it, the bees love it, but for in these beds, I gotta get something more compact and maybe plant these on the periphery. Corn was great this year, it's the best I've had. Now the difference between this and what I've grown in the past is this was a hybrid. I'll put the name on the screen, I forget what it is right now, but. So in other years, um, it's like you almost have to catch them at the right specific moment. Otherwise, they're either not ripe or they're just overripe and starchy. And these, I seem to be able to harvest over like almost two weeks, even though they were planted at the same time and they were not over starchy. But I think what I'm going to do next year is plant more of it. I'm going to plant an heirloom variety and then I'm going to plant this variety again because I loved it, even though I don't remember the name. And I'm gonna do some succession planting. So plant maybe half a bed, and then a few weeks later, plant another half a bed. And I'll probably do, I'm telling this to my future self, two beds of corn next year. Look at this. This is, <sighs> oh, that is a heavy one. Quick break to give these to Daisy and Ollie and Otis. And I know that people are going to say you can, you know, hollow those out and make zucchini boats out of them. You absolutely can. I just don't happen to like those. All right, these are heavy. Hope I make this shot. Oh, yeah. They love them. Chickens love them, too. I'll give them some. All right, they'll be happy for a while. All right, so one thing I need to remember next year is to keep these trees cut lower. Uh, they grow up and they shade this section down here too much. Um, the zucchini seem to be doing okay, which is weird because they're sun-loving plants. I guess they get just enough, you know, from like nine in the morning to maybe two. So that's five hours. I've already got potatoes coming back from ones that accidentally got left in the ground. I'll be planting potatoes again in about two weeks. The asparagus, this is their last year of not being harvested. Asparagus need to be about three years old when you start to harvest them. That allows the roots to really get established. And then this, this coming spring, February here, um, they start to 
put up their sprouts and there should be a lot more than there has been. Each year should be more and you want to leave them so they can get the energy from the sun and build the root systems even further. Now I've been told that that's for seed started asparagus. If you plant crowns like I did, you only have to wait two years, which I think is probably correct because the sprouts that they were putting up this last year were really thick. They were really vigorous and healthy, but this coming spring should be even better. As far as eggplant is concerned, I definitely know it need more than one plant. I showed you on the last, or a couple of videos ago maybe, how many eggplants we've got in here. And they're still, I mean, it's just, they're just loaded. I cannot use them all. Um, so I'm going to be giving them away. I don't even like eggplant. Although I've never tried this variety. And for those of you who are asking, this is Japanese long. Now, I'm trying to remember, and I'll have to go back and watch last year's video, um, and I'll let you know on some text here on the screen. I'm thinking this actually was not planted this year. It might have been planted last year and then overwintered. I'm not sure about that. I'll put it on the screen. You can see here, I had another basil plant in the same bed with this huge one. Uh, and I had to push it over to be able to harvest the jalapenos and the Fresno chilies. And those plants, you can see they're very squiggly. They're not strong at all because they were under this huge basil plant. Ugh, this bindweed. So let's head up to the cottage garden and I'll see what I want to do differently up there. Take a look at those chrysanthemums up there under the window. Oh man, I almost got sprinklered. <laughs> anyway, look at these. Now, if you guys remember, these are the ones that I had last year got them from Costco in two pots and we had them on either side of the garage door. I heard they're back at Costco right now, so I might go grab a couple more. Anyway, back to the vegetables. So in the beginning of the year, it's an airplane up there. In the beginning of the year, uh, we had the free gardening for, for free up here. And then I did a little bit of gardening around that that trellis for the School of Traditional Skills. And I left the rest of this open for the camera equipment and the crew and stuff. And then I never really planted anything up here. Uh, the hot weather was here and I was just kind of done planting. I did plant some watermelon and cantaloupe here, which I pretty much knew it was gonna to be too late in the year to get a good harvest. And yeah, it was. I've got a small cantaloupe here and then uh, what is this? This is a cantaloupe as well. So we'll see what they do. I don't hold out a lot of hope. I gotta get in here and clean up these blackberries um, and then get this ready for planting because I definitely wanna get planting in this this fall. So there's not as much as I wanna change, especially down in the main vegetable garden in terms of what I did wrong last year. Um, other than the shade, that's the biggest thing and too much Thai basil. Um, but, you know, last year at this time, there was definitely a lot of things I want to change. I've been here for three years now, so I'm kind of whittling it down and, and getting things how I want them and, and to know uh, what I need, what I want, what grows well, where, and it does take some time. If you're in a new property or you just started gardening, it's going to take you some time to figure everything out. And that's what this time of year is for, to kind of reassess and keep notes so that next year, you're going to be that much better. For those of you saying don't throw these away, save the seeds, um, just remember they're hybrids so they won't come true to whatever seed this is. Hey guys, it's the next day. So Sunday, I think, was it Sunday? Uh, I put a video out about community and not being self-sufficient, not having to do everything on your own, and then announcing our new community. 
that we are starting uh, this coming Sunday. So in two days, there was such a great response to that. I wasn't expecting, I mean, I thought people would be excited about it because I was excited about it. Um, but I wasn't expecting the huge response that I got. So many great supportive comments, but not only that, at the end of the video, we put a link for you to go and just get on the email list so you're the first ones to know uh, when our community opens. And at this point, we have over 800 of you who actually signed up for that email. So last chance before Sunday, I'll put the link in this uh, video description again to get signed up for our mailing list. And then you'll get a link um, on Sunday when it's open to go and check it out. I'll have another full video on Sunday actually just kind of uh, explaining what we're doing in more detail. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you Sunday.